Well, good morning, folks, and I'm up to some morning maintenance and hanging out with the ducks before I get to uh, work on the podcast and everything else I do every day. And this morning, what I'm doing, pruning back some of this stuff. This is uh, water celery. And as you can see, it's quite prolific, and I pruned that back. I got to prune this whole thing back today. Actually, I'm probably going to stop today, and I'll finish tomorrow. We do eat this. It's a pretty good vegetable. It's actually considered a gourmet vegetable. Uh, in parts of like Vietnam and, and what have you. And, uh, but you can see what I'm doing with it. Well, the ducks pools, they love to eat that stuff out of the water because it's very much what they would do in their native habitat. That pool's about full. And you can see, uh, I can pretty much feed them this stuff three or four times a week all through spring into fall. With only 10 ducks, you know. Right now, actually, I need to prune more than they even will eat. They won't finish all this today. But, uh... Ah! Water celery overboard! <laughs> Let's go whip that back in there for them. They really do like... You can imagine just being a duck. This is... Duck Vaughn in here, man. Here you guys go. Oh, get it. So... I figured I'd also catch you up on where the aquaponic systems are. So, these are all wicking beds to drain back to this 300 gallon tank that's in here. It's got two 50 gallon ebb and flow beds. And uh, I've pretty much made a decision that I'm gonna grow mostly onions and celery in these ebb and flow beds. It does really good. These are just store-bought uh, green onions we stuck the tips down in. You see, I can't even keep up on harvesting. I got them going to seed. Some plants, they get really kind of not so tasty once they go to seed. Onions, it really doesn't bother them. Uh, we'll be able to cut that. It'll look like a leek instead of a green onion. But right now, I decided to go ahead and let these guys go to seed. Let them flower. See what pollinators it brings in. I mean, it's really easy to, uh, to replant that. And then the celery. Not the water celery. The celery celery. These are just celery hearts from store-bought celery, instead of cutting the base off the celery, pull the outside, leave, you know, four or five small stalks, that celery heart, <coughs> drop it in an ebb and flow bed, and off you go. So we pretty much have all the celery you could want. Now this is gonna be really great celery for eating on you know, peanut butter on it or something like that. It grows thinner stalks, and they're bright green, but they have incredible flavor. And then the leaves, you know, I don't know why, but in our country, we don't see the value of the leaf of the celery. Fantastic in stir fries, fantastic in salads. Now, I wouldn't want to eat a celery leaf salad, but let's say maybe 10 to 15% of the green mix being this. Absolutely. And we're getting to that time of year where I'm going to be able to make, you know, a celery salad with some wild arugula. Because i got arugula growing wild all around here. Lamb's quarters, nasturtiums. My salad time of the year is coming up in about the next 30 days. We'll have uh, white blossoms on the locust cat that is a good you see and she knows she's not supposed to be in there she's actually not bad about that we don't have problems people asked about the cats getting up in here they got so much space she's not doing that because that's what she does normally she's doing that because she wants me to feed her a can of cat food and she's being kind of coy and, and just trying to get my attention anyway carrots are still not up but the broccoli's looking good this is going to be a Jerusalem artichoke uh, bed. You can see the Jerusalem artichokes come up. Learned something here. Last year, about May, I guess, maybe June at the latest, I ordered some Jerusalem artichokes. And I ended up not having a place to plant them. I thought I was going to have a place, and I didn't. And I just left them in the refrigerator over the winter. And I was sure when I opened them up, they would be all leaky and weepy and nasty. Uh, they were packed with damp paper towel in plastic wrapped up really good in a box i never opened it when i pulled them out they felt like they might be a little bit lighter than you'd expect like they shed some water i dropped them into this bed and almost every one of them has come up so we will have this thing will literally be full of artichokes i bet you will get you know 50 pounds maybe 100 pounds of artichokes out of this one bed uh, a lot of people say why well, plant a plant like that in something that's like this intensively managed because we can and because of the fact that I don't have to worry about this becoming invasive on my property if it's in here. And because what's going to happen is as these guys send out runners and they set their tubers, they're going to hit this wall. And it's genetically in them 
then when they hit an obstruction, they stop there and they set a tuber. That helps them actually displace plants. That's how they compete. So they'll go out and they'll hit something, let's say an asparagus crumb, and they hit that, and they'll set a tuber right underneath that asparagus crumb. And next spring, when that tuber sprouts, it'll blow that other plant right up out of the ground. That's how they spread. But when you put them in a container like this, and I learned that from Dave Jackie, you end up with almost all of your tubers set on the outside. That way you can just reach in and pull them out and you just let a little bit stay in there and it'll come back every year and you'll have them forever. Uh, look garlic chives in here. We're going to try basically um, sort of a three sisters type garden. What I'm going to do is once this stuff gets up, I'm going to prune out the understory a bit. We'll put some beans up, some pole beans up onto the Jerusalem artichokes, which should grow about six to eight foot tall. So, you know, you're talking, they're going to be way, way up there because they're already, what, three feet off the ground. So that's what's going on in this bed. Over here, might as well go see the aviary and everything today, right? Lettuce, spinach, etc., just looking good. And uh, except for that one plant, just not making it. Everybody else looks good. Corn starting to pop up. Yeah, corn. Are you crazy, Jack? Well, I'm crazy. That's not crazy because I'm planting corn, though. Um, this will be a small four by four block of corn. It's a golden bantam corn. The ears only get, you know, about a little bit bigger than that. You know, about eight inches. And, uh, well, that'll be our one little corn yield for the year, and it'll success into something else. I also have peas coming up in here and some other stuff. Cruising on over here, you can see uh, I was on water celery cutting duty yesterday here, and it'll be like two weeks, and this will be completely grown back in. Um, the salvinia and duckweed. Made it through our winters. They didn't look real happy, but it's alive and it's coming back. And I attribute it to these. These are uh, 250 watt stock tank heaters. They come on at 35 and go off at 45. I had one in each of the top tanks in my aquatic system plugged in, and that was enough to keep the entire system. Of course, again, those that are new, these 370 gallon tanks overflow into that 470 gallon tank. And that's that overflow right there. It's a pipe that runs under the ground. And the height of that pipe right there where you see that water coming out, that sets the level in that tank. That pipe there sets the levels in those tanks. Very, very simple, very, very passive. One small pump draws 87 watts, sits down here, pumps the water up to there, constant circulation. My big giant comet goldfish are kind of shy, so they just all scooted up under there, but they have been breeding like crazy. More water celery, uh, reeds, we got water chestnuts starting to come up. We're growing edible foods in these little aquatic systems. Got pickerel weed coming up there. Uh, not much in this one. I'm keeping this one down for this year because I still need to get in there and I, all this pickerel rush that's coming up, I need to get that cleaned out. I need to do that. I don't know when I'm gonna get it done, but it's gonna be overgrown. There's so much that it's spread out. And I got that new pond coming right there the end of next month. So what I wanna do is make a bunch of plants out of this one for the new pond. So we're now using one pond to propagate plants for the next pond. These little beds, I, I you know, I wanna get rid of them, but they're not hurting anything, so just let them be. Everything in here is volunteer from last year. We got dill, we got carrot. That's cilantro. I just saw that pop up today. We got some uh, garlic chives, we got Swiss chard. Everything in here is just uh, coming up. But what I don't like about these and where I tried to make them, these are the 21 gallon concrete mixing trays. Set them up as a standard kind of uh, wicking bed with a very small amount of space down here. What happens if you let this run continuously, eventually it clogs and it, it floods out and it's just too shallow to do a good wicking bed in. But if you come out once a day, run water through them until it comes out the bottom and shut them off, they do a nice job of growing little greens and stuff like that, and that's what we'll use it for, so we'll let those be for this year. Let me get my coffee. We, uh, we will not check out the Miyagi Pond today. We'll call it short of that, but we are going to go back and see how the aviary is doing, because I know in my last video, not my last video, my last video before my last video, one video ago, I had just planted peppers in here, and they were pretty small, scrawny plants. It's only been a week. The wildflowers man I love this time of year and uh, but they've really started to come along and I also planted things like amaranth and dill to harvest first as baby greens then as 
you know, small greens, and then as like saute size greens, and then leave some to grow larger within there, and you can start to see it all coming up. And you'll see that I don't get fussy with it. Like, if you look right there, there's just tons of amaranth. And all I do is just take pinches of amaranth and just throw it in there. So right now I've got microgreens, right, of amaranth. I can just have a little snacks and clear it out. Oh, first nasturtium's coming up. And uh, so there's another nasturtium coming up. So everything's doing good in here. Got the screen off of it, full sun, until about July. We'll put the uh, shade cloth back on. And... Uh, yeah, peppers are starting to kind of come on, aren't they? Some volunteer garlic chive coming up there. We'll let that happen. And again, it's the same thing in every one. There's just some dill and uh, just a little green dits of dill. And there's also sweet alyssum in here. So I'm going to try to kind of carpet all of the understory with sweet alyssum this year, uh, which is a flower, just a pretty flower, and do that to bring in more pollinators. And uh, also just to act as kind of a ground cover so I don't have to re-mulch through the year. So these are Cuban L peppers. Here's the jalapenos. A little dill coming up there. One tomato in the back. Tomatoes are starting to look like they're starting to come around. So, you know, these guys were in pots. And uh, so they were, you know, they kind of fill up those pots. out. good root systems on them. But they're just, you know, after about a week, they're probably just now starting to get roots out of that root ball and into the soil and realize, hey, it's on, baby. We can grow. So I'm hoping this year as I take these beds through succession, and I planted them a lot less densely. Last year and the years before, I put six pepper plants in each bed, and I felt like eventually the peppers crowded each other out. By sticking to four, and these peppers grow tall, once these peppers get up to about, you know, yay high, We'll prune them out to about yay high. We'll get that understory pruned out and see what we can grow down in here. I don't know if I'm going to do sweet potatoes in here this year. Maybe not at the level I did last year. There's just, we can't keep up with the growth and eating them. And I can grow all I want out of the pond. So maybe we can get more, uh, more of a yield out of here, some more high-end stuff. Because the beauty about this place is everything's protected. We can't have any little critters coming in here and eating them. Uh, Insect-wise, it's kept down a lot because... These guys here are quail that live in here. They're really good about eating bugs and insects. Not everything, but certainly we have less insect pressure here than you would anywhere else on the property. And uh, yet yeah, another nasturtium. These nasturtiums all came up last night. So that's one day, because I was in here yesterday and there, there was none of them sticking up. I got a little heavy handed with the uh, amaranth back there. But see, that's the thing. It'll just grow to like a baby green size and I'll get a beautiful salad out of that and I'll leave some behind. Same with the dill, you know, we'll, we'll take some of the dill really small. There's a bunch of dill in there. And, uh, you know, you can always pluck out some for microgreens or whatever, but I'd let them get a little bit bigger to a baby green size and then leave some behind because this is just, you know, it's, it's stupid cheap to plant plants like this. Now, this is kind of a higher end amaranth, this red amaranth. Let me give you a secret. You want to plant a lot of amaranth for greens. Go to like Whole Foods or any place that sells organic. They sell bulk amaranth by the pound. Buy a pound of bulk amaranth for like $3. You'll be able to grow amaranth greens for yourself for a whole season and then some if you really want to, if you let them get up, you know, about that big. Uh, they're gonna be green. I've never found any that are red like this uh, in that bulk pricing. Or you can get, you know, the stuff you like. This is, I don't remember what this is. I wanted Hopi red dye this year, but I didn't get that. This is another variety of amaranth. The seeds of this variety are actually like a golden color, but the plant is red. The Hopi red dye, the seeds are like a black. I should probably still get some of that this year. But uh, again, cherry tomatoes in the back. I found that they do the best for us in our climate over full-size tomatoes. Uh, that one there has got blossoms on it. And I gotta decide, see how little that plant is? Do I wanna be greedy? Or do I wanna pinch those blossoms off and put that plant all in the growth? I think I'll let that one go and I'll pinch blossoms off the other ones a little comparison shopping, so to say. See what happens. We've got to decide what we want to do with our bees, our uh, mason bees. Put those two houses in last year. Tried to put mason bees in them, and the fire ants went in and killed them. I'm thinking about setting a 4x4 somewhere on the property, probably cedar, because it'll last forever, and putting them up on it with some sort of a block to keep the daggone fire ants out. They give you a chemical attractant to spray in here when you release your bees to attract them. And it, I found out it's like fire ant candy. As soon as I put it in there, the fire ants went straight in there. So 
Uh, we got to figure out what we're doing with that this year. Other than that, things are looking good, huh, Quails? Want to take a quick look in the greenhouse? Hey, what are you doing, bud? All right, let me uh, tell you, we're not going to look at the greenhouse today. We're out and about. Let's go ahead. I know we said we weren't going to do it. Let's take a walk over the Miyagi Pond. Because I want to talk about this new pond that we're building. What we learned from the old one. In fact, you know what? Let me sign off. I'll do a, a separate video on that. There's the cat running up the tree. I told you, man, she's trying to get me to feed her. We'll do another video. We'll put them out back to back. And we'll uh, take a look at the Miyagi Pond today. Love spring. <laughs> 